Amen. It's good to see you this evening. Appreciate you being back tonight. And, you know, this is uh, the eve of July the 4th, so a lot of folk are probably cooking out tonight. Probably down to the fireworks stand, buying them some fireworks. You know, I might spend money on a lot of foolish things, but you ain't going to see this preacher. <laughs> his, his money he, money going up and smoking fireworks. And it's all right for those that want to do it. That's perfectly all right. But uh, evidently, people make a lot of money because everybody's selling them. But it's good to see you tonight. Appreciate you being here. Glad to have our visitors with us. And um, somebody said, Preacher, you need to use that duct tape. I'm going to hide this duct tape. Because I'm afraid when my throat gets better, then that's when y'all going to want to use it. Okay? So we're going to hide this or put it back there and put it in a toolbox. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, it's good to be here tonight. Let me just say, when I come to church, I want to have a good time. Amen. Amen. I want to enjoy myself. I want to laugh. And uh, when you come to church, you don't have to be all this sour looking. And I guess that's reading the Lord, putting the Bible, be not afraid of their faces. And let me just say, a lot of times you can get some weird looks out in the congregation. But I, I believe the reason that is, we think on other things and the things that we should be thinking on, the things of God. But we do have a lot of people traveling. Some even left this evening to go on vacation. So we ask you, if you would, please to pray for all those that have safety and they come back home uh, safe and uh, continue to pray for our sick folk. Take, pray for Miss Doris and Brother Clarence. Uh, pray for Miss Thelma. Pray for Brother Lee and others that have been uh, Brother Smiley and his wife. Keep them in your prayers. Just a lot of people that are uh, unable to come to church that would love to be here. So let's pray for them. Let's stand if you would and we'll go to the Lord word of prayer. We'll ask the Lord's blessing tonight to be upon the service. Pray for Brother Robert once again. I appreciate him speaking for us this morning. And I would appreciate that you would pray for my throat that it would get better and get better quickly. I, I miss not being in the pulpit. I will say this, um, Brother Austin Sellers is going to be with us Wednesday night and uh, speak for us, so give him an opportunity to come. And He texted me back and he said, uh, Preacher said, would it be all right if I come Wednesday night? That's before I really confirmed the invitation for him to come. He said, could I gear my message toward the youth? I said, well, sure you can. So let's have the young people here. You old folk come too, though. You older, not you old folk, you older folk, you come too. But uh, I appreciate uh, Austin and his desire to preach the word and the stand that he's taking. So pray for that young man that God would use him and the Lord would bless him. We got men in our church that's capable, and uh, some of them are gone. But anyway, I appreciate Brother Robert helping us today, and it's a real blessing. I appreciate you, Brother Robert. Thank you so much. So let's ask the Lord's blessing tonight to be upon the service. Brother Mike Boone, you pray for us, please. Amen. If you remain standing, please turn your hymn books, page number 12, the old rugged cross. I'm glad we have a cross we can look for today. We'll see its evidence in our lives. We're going to sing the first, second, and the last verse, the old rugged cross. <clears throat> Despised by the world 
sing for us. You pray for him and the song the Lord's laid on his heart. Thankful for the cross. No. A lot of men shed their blood that we might have freedom here in the United States. They got tired of people, they, they, they got tired of the government taking their money and giving it to other religions, taking their property and selling it to give to other religions. So they stood up to them. But I'm more thankful for the, for the grace of God where Jesus shed his precious blood we might have forgiveness of sins. We might have liberty. We have liberty today because people shed their blood some 300 years ago. More than that, we have, we have liberty because Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary. blood is just as strong as the day it flows so free from the cross of Calvary. I found power in the blood and forgiveness for my sins. I found a refuge from
Jesus gave me perfect love And I found it all in the blood Find his benefits in his blood, amen? You know, uh, I hadn't planned to sing tonight, uh, but I had somebody that wasn't able to be here, and uh, Miss Norma had asked me to sing a song uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and I was going to sing that song, but uh, the words are on my phone, and I, I realized tonight that I couldn't play the music on my phone while I was reading the words on my phone. Chord's not long enough, <laughs> but uh, you know I don't think that's by accident. This song I'm going to sing tonight is about the blood, also. But, you know, it doesn't matter what we've done or what we think we've done. Jesus' blood covers everything. Amen. Uh, you know, I, it doesn't take a gallon or an ocean or even a river, but just one drop is all it takes. When He was hanging on the cross, that first drop that fell down was all it would take to cleanse our souls. So I'm going to try this one. I have, uh, I don't know if I've ever sung this song, but uh, I've had it for a while. Um, so I'm going to try it for you tonight. Madison, do you want to sing it? <laughs> well, I don't know it either, but it's not going to stop me. <laughs> the 
come to be washed in it. If you'll stand, please turn your hymn books, page 124. We're going to sing, Are You Washed in the Blood? We'll sing the first and the last verse. Page 124, if you'll stand, please. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Are you washed in the blood? If not, you can be before you leave today. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the Cleansing blood of the Lamb. All your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the fountain flowing for the soul unclean oh be washed in the blood of the lamb are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white So much you may be seated, Pastor. Hey. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jamie. I appreciate the song service tonight. Appreciate the special music. It's always a blessing. Appreciate having our folks that will take part in the services. Let me make a couple announcements. Uh, the, at the end of this uh, month, on June, uh, July the 27th, on a Wednesday night, Brother John DeRussia is going to be with us. Uh, and we're once again going to do a Bible and a book drive uh, for him to take some Bibles into countries that don't have the privilege to have the copy of the Word of God as you and I do. So if you'd like to start bringing those, I know we haven't got any yet, but if you'd like to start bringing those and just putting them down here at the altar, uh, we'll start collecting those so you can bring them any time that you'd like. And I know you can go to the Dollar Tree and places like that and you can buy the copy of the Word of God for, um, for a dollar. So it wouldn't hurt anybody to go by and pick up about five or ten or so or whatever and Let's fill the altar up with Bibles. Make sure they're King James Bibles. That's the only thing that they're going to use and the only thing they're going to take and the only thing that we want to give them, amen. So uh, if you would, please just try to do that. Probably 24. So we can order them if we need to, but we need to order them soon enough to, you know, get everybody. So if you'd like to get some, let's try to get them together and, Maybe you'd let us know how many you'd like to buy, and we could order them all at one time. They can. That'd be good. Just see how long it take to get them. Maybe call tomorrow and see how long it'll take to get them. Okay. I don't want to do like we do the Christmas bowls. I have to go to every Dollar Tree in South Carolina and find enough of those oval Christmas bowls that we make up on Christmas to give to our, our senior citizens and our officers and our preachers around. And uh, I, I hit every one of them. I mean, I start over in Greenville and come through Greer and come through Spartanburg. And buying those bowls, but I've been buying them up. So we got some we've already bought this year, getting ready for that. You say Jesus might come back before Christmas. Well, if he does, somebody else can use them. <laughs> Amen. I won't be around to use them. I hope you're not around to fix them, ladies and gentlemen. I hope y'all not here to wrap them up. 
But um, we've got to prepare. I've always said this. We ought to live like Jesus is going to come back in the next five seconds. And work like he's not going to come back in the next 500 years. Because there's still a lot that needs to be done. The folk, he could come back at any moment. I believe he's coming. He's close. So keep that in mind. That's, that'll, he'll be here on the 27th of July. That's on a Wednesday night. The latest meeting uh, will not be this month because of it being July the 4th week. But they are planning to get together and going out on an outing sometimes in August. And they'll be saying more about that. And then I'd mention, don't forget, this coming Saturday, men, uh, the prayer meeting on Saturday at 7 o'clock. And those of you that can come and be with us, we'd love to have you. And once again, pray for all the requests. Let's have the ushers come forward and receive our offering this evening. And that you give is given unto the Lord. And, boy, it's good to be in the Lord's house. I, I, we, we're here tonight so we can get some help and get some good encouragement. And I've already been encouraged by just being here tonight. Just a blessing to be here. So tonight you give. And I'm sure the Lord will bless you in your giving. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessings to be upon us. Brother Danny, Henry, you pray for us, please. Yes. Yes. Grant it, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> If you don't have youngers to get your money, you have to bring your own down here, okay? Uh, one other announcement uh, on July the 24th that will be three weeks from today uh, we'll be having a, a dinner immediately following the morning service to honor our pastor for his birthday I, 26 birthday's on the 26th so uh, on that Sunday July the 24th 
we'll be honoring him with a dinner after the morning service. Make sure you tell your neighbors that aren't here, and I'll tell your neighbors that are here, because they're probably not listening, to make sure they bring something. We'll get the chicken, and, and we'll let y'all get all the other good stuff. Amen? Thank you, Brother Jamie. And uh, it's good to be here again tonight. Brother Robert's going to come and share with us tonight what the Lord's laid upon his heart. And I appreciate what he brought this morning. It was a real blessing. And I appreciate Brother Robert helping us uh, this week. And I uh, appreciate men in the church is able and capable of doing that. So come on up, Brother Robert. And uh, God bless you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate you. say it's good to be here again tonight. I'd rather be here than in any jail in the state of South Carolina. But, uh, I thank the Lord for our pastor and for the confidence he has not only in giving me an opportunity to preach but giving the other men in the church that the Lord has called into the ministry. And I tell you it is an awesome responsibility to stand in the pulpit and to preach God's word. And as I said this morning, I know our pastor would rather be here and rather be preaching, but you continue to pray for him that the Lord will quickly uh, heal his voice and he'll be able to be back uh, in his pulpit. But tonight, what I would like to do is the, we're going to read three short passages of Scripture for our text. They're all pretty close, so we're going to start out in the little book of Philemon. So find the book of Philemon. We're going to read one verse, verse 24, and then we're going to read a verse in Colossians, and then finally a verse in 2 Timothy. So Philemon, verse 24. Thank you, brother. Philemon, verse 24, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. And now I'll turn back just a few pages to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, I'm going to read one verse there. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14. Colossians 4, 14. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas... Greet you. And then finally, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. And I think this is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. 2 Timothy 4.10 For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for the privilege we have and to proclaim your word. Father, we pray that something we say tonight might be an encouragement or a blessing to your people that have come aside for this service. Father, we pray that you might uh, work in our pastor's uh, a life and, and heal his throat, that he might soon be able to be back to preaching again. Father, whatever is accomplished tonight, we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, that he had fought a good fight, he had finished the course, and he had kept the faith. What a testimony for one of God's servants. Fought a good fight, finished the course, and kept the faith. Paul was truly a faithful soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had served the Lord from his conversion on the Damascus Road, to the end of his life when he gave his life because of his faith in the stand that he took for Christ. Paul would never have dreamed of quitting. The Apostle Paul should be our example of what you and I ought to do as God's servants. 
Unfortunately, many Christians today, rather than follow the example of Paul, are just like Demas, that the three verses of Scripture we read uh, tell us about. The first verse that we read in Philemon verse uh, 24, Paul speaks of Demas as his fellow laborer. In other words, his laborer in the ministry, his fellow missionary. And here Demas, at that particular time, was faithful in helping Paul and faithful in getting the word of God out and faithful in serving the Lord. Undoubtedly, he had started out just as Paul as a faithful soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. No doubt Demas had witnessed remarkable results as were evident in Paul's ministry. Demas had witnessed many conversions, many folks that came to a true saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as a result of Paul's preaching. Then in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14, when we next hear of Demas, apparently something has happened. Apparently he's not as strong in, in the faith as he was when Paul mentions him in Philemon 24. For Paul merely says, Demas greets thee. Something either in his attitude or something in his work ethic, ethic had changed and his zeal had apparently diminished. And then the final verse that we just read, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10, as I said, is a sad verse and it's a rather sad commentary on the life of Demas. Once again, Paul says, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved the present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. And the word here that's translated, having loved, it's a form of the Greek word agapao, or that all-abiding, deep love, that all-consuming type of love. So then Demas had developed such a love for the world that this love was totally consuming his life. I want to speak for just a few minutes tonight on the subject, Demas, the portrait of a quitter. Folks, I, I don't know about you, but it's often difficult to live for the Lord and to serve the Lord. I remember years ago when I was having a great deal of difficulty uh, on the job that I worked. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, my company had decided that uh, they could uh, take folks who had been there several years. It didn't matter what kind of work uh, they were doing, uh, what kind of production they had, but they came up with the bright idea that they could force them out prior to being at the age to take early retirement and hire a couple younger people. Uh, for less money for two than for one. Well, they found out later on that that didn't work out. But I was under a great deal of stress. And then there were other problems going on in my life. And there were times when I just wanted to throw the towel down and quit. I just wanted to cash out. The devil, I'll tell you what, the devil doesn't fight fair. When the devil sees that you have problems going on in your life, and he just piles on even more. But a church that we were serving as assistant pastor in at that time, one of the ladies in the church for a birthday present had done a needlepoint of one of Dr. Bob Sr.'s sayings. And it said, the test of a man's character is what it takes to stop him. And I remember nights I would come home and I'd said, I've had enough. I can't take this anymore. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to quit serving the Lord. It's not worth it. And I would open the door to my house and come in the house. And the first thing that I would see, and I'd put it right there when I come in my front door, is the test of a man's character is what it takes to stop him. And that's what I want if you don't get anything else tonight out of the thoughts we're going to share with you. Just remember... That the test of a man's character 
in a lady's character too. But the test of a Christian's character is what it would take to stop him. And I ask the question tonight, what would it take, if anything, to stop you? You see, Demas started out fighting the good fight, running the race. Then for whatever reason, he cooled off. And the last we hear of him, he has completely forsaken, not only Paul, but completely forsaken the work of the Lord. Several things real quick that I want to share with you tonight is it's a privilege that you and I have to live for the Lord. You see, all of us, the best we deserve is hell. And if you don't understand anything else, understand that even at our very best, all we deserve is hell. But God so loved us and so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And, 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 and as I said, and I can't say it enough, it is a, not only a responsibility, but it's a privilege that pastor has enough confidence in me to allow me to stand and to preach God's word. It's a privilege that God has given me to have a radio ministry and by way of the internet to be on radio stations around the world. And it's something that I don't take lightly. And as that privilege that God gives to us, you and I ought to always strive to please the Lord. We ought to put, as I said this morning, we ought to put Jesus first Amen. in all that we say and do. He ought to be the center of our lives and it ought to be our desire not only to please the Lord, but it ought to be our desire to win other folks to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, whatever we do, when we name the name of Christ, there are folks that are looking at our lives. And there are folks that are watching us to see what we will do. And when circumstances come in our lives, there are folks who would just love to pounce on us, just like the devil does, if we're not to be faithful to the Lord. But it's a privilege to live for the Lord and to serve the Lord. But the Lord gives his children a position in life. And what is that, what is that position that he gives us? Well, each and every one of us have received a commission from the Lord. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You say, but Brother Robert, the Lord's not called me to preach, but he's called you to go in the world and to be a witness to everyone that you come in contact with, to give out gospel tracts, to share the gospel, to be unashamed to proclaim the word of God. Some folks God has called into the ministry. Some folks God has called to be missionaries. Some folks God has called to be evangelists. And the sad fact of the matter is, one of the signs that we're living in the last days, so many missionaries go to the field for one term and they come home on furlough and they never go back to the mission field. Now I realize some have health problems, other things happen, but some missionaries just get so discouraged that when they come home on furlough, they just throw the towel in and quit and say, that's it. We are to finish the task, complete the work that the Lord has given us. Oh, it's a privilege to be involved in the Lord's work. It's a privilege to live for the Lord and serve the Lord. And we have a position to fulfill in God's work. But alas, just like in the life of Demas, worldly pleasures sometimes get a hold of our lives. Worldly ple pleasures will draw us away from our faithfulness. Folks, it, I know just like Pastor, it, it's sad to me to see folks who once, even in the six years since we've been here, it saddens me to see folks who were once faithful 
and once never missed a service, once would stand up and testify to what God had done in their life, to how the Lord had blessed them, folks who would sing in the choir. And now where are they? Oh, I know sometimes folks leave and they go to another church and get involved in the ministry there. And, and that's not the folks that we're talking about. But folks who are not going to church anywhere now. Folks who are completely out of God's will. Folks who once stood for the Lord. No doubt folks who hugged the pastor and said, Pastor, I love you. And though everyone else will leave you, I'll stand with you, Pastor. I'm with you, Pastor. You know, that's exactly what Peter did that night Christ, before Christ was crucified. Peter said, Lord, though all of these will forsake you, Lord, I'll stand with you. I'll be right there with you, Lord. And the Lord said, Peter, before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. Oh, no, not me, Lord. No, 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 I'm not going to do it. That's exactly what he did. Not only did Peter deny that he knew the Lord, but he ended up cursing and swearing, I don't know the man. And then the cock crowed. Peter realized what he had done and said he went out and he wept bitterly. You know, oftentimes I've been saved by God's grace. This September the 12th will be 45 years. I wouldn't give anything for these 45 years and there's no way God helping me that I'd ever go back to my old life. I know what I was before God saved me. I know what he saved me out of and I know what he's done for me and I know the ministry he's called me into. But sometimes the temptations of this life and the pull of the old life, our former life, as is evident in the life of Demas, it becomes so great that we just say, that's it, I'm checking out. And it says here that Demas loved the present world more than he loved, not only Paul, but more than he, his love was for the Lord. I tell you what, all you have to do is turn on the TV and stuff even five years ago that you would have never had thought would be on regular TV. And, and I was, I'm, I'm almost, of course I don't have all state insurance, but if I had all state insurance, I don't know how many of you have it, I'd be tempted to quit it. They have a commercial on all state now. It's the stupidest commercial I've ever seen. A transvestite that's, uh, some of you have seen it, a transvestite that, uh, I don't know whether it's really a male or a female, but it's, <laughs> it's weird a advertising. All state insurance. And just look at the laws that are going on. You know, if I wake up this morning and I decide, well, this morning I feel like a woman, so I'm going to go into the woman's bathroom. Or one of you ladies work up, you say, well, today I feel like a man, I'm going to go in the man's bathroom. Who would have ever thought that our country would come to something like that? But the pull of this world is so great, and the world hates us. Those of us who determine in our heart that we're going to live for the Lord and serve the Lord, the world hates us. Of Demas, purpose in his heart that he was going to walk away from the Lord. He was going to walk away from the ministry. He was going to quit. The privilege we have to live for the Lord and serve the Lord, the position that we have in, in serving the Lord, but the pressures of this world and then the pleasures. The Bible truly says there's pleasure in sin for a season. And all you need to do is just look at the commercials on TV and listen to the commercials on the radio. And I tell you what, the lure of the world. The guy who drinks this particular type of alcoholic beverage, this particular brand, he gets all the beautiful women. And the woman that drinks this type of wine or whatever, wine cooler, she gets the good looking handsome men. And on and on and on it goes. And the world makes sin to look so attractive. 
the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's the three things, three ways the devil causes folks to sin. And as I said, there's pleasure in sin. There's pleasure in doing the things that the world does. Demas quit. He forsook the Lord. He forsook Paul. But one last thing is the pain, the pain that comes in one's life when they quit. They lose the blessings of the Lord on their life. Now, I'm not saying that every time that, that a person gets sick, because sometimes God brings sickness in our lives, or sometimes God brings uh, an accident or whatever in our lives, uh, not because we're out of touch with Him or, or out of His will, but nothing ever catches God by surprise. Things may catch you and I by surprise, and we may wonder why things happen, but God has a reason for whatever He does. And sometimes sickness and, and, and tragedy may come in our lives when we're faithfully serving the Lord. But you see, the thing about it is, it's just like Dr. Bob Sr., the test of a man's character is what it will take to stop him. Look at the life of Job. Look what the devil did to Job. He just piled it on and piled it on and piled it on. Job's wife even said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says in all of this, Job remained faithful. I'll tell you what, I, I don't know whether I could deal with all that Job dealt with. But God was faithful. And God brought him through, although his friends come and they, you know, they, what, what kind of friends were those? Job, <laughs> it's always been our understanding and people that are going through what you're going through, uh, that you've done something terrible in your life. Job, well, what, what have you done? You need to repent. God's beating you, Job, and punishing you for something you've got obviously going. No. The devil gave God a challenge. The devil said, eh, if you let me do whatever I want to do to Job, he'll curse you to your face. Didn't happen. Why? Because Job had integrity in his life. And although Job cursed the day he was born and wished he had never been born, he never cursed God. Oh, there's pain and suffering when we get out of God's will. I tell you what, when God takes his children to his woodshed, I don't know about you, but I know in my life, God lets me know when I got something going on that's not pleasing to him. And God gives us an opportunity to repent and to get things right with him. But I tell you what, there's nothing any worse than a Christian that's out of fellowship with the Lord. There's nothing worse than a person who has been truly saved by God's grace who throws the towel in and quits. I don't know. When pastor asked me the other day to preach today, I had no idea what I was going to preach, but the more I read and prayed and studied, those of you who were here this morning, you know the message that I brought this morning. I think that was for somebody, and this message tonight I know is for somebody. Are you thinking about quitting? Are you thinking about throwing the towel in and giving up on the Lord? You say, I just can't take it anymore. I just can't stand it anymore. I'm going to throw in the towel and quit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Keep on keeping on for the Lord. You know, you and I who have been saved by God's grace, I for one can't wait till that day when I see my Savior face to face. And I look in His eyes and I say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for paying my eternity in hell. But how different would it be 
for a person who's truly been saved to be totally out of God's will, to go back on the Lord, to go back to the pleasures of the world, to die and go out to eternity and face the Lord. Oh, yes, saved, saved. But how terrible that would be to look in the eyes of the Savior and know that you had thrown in the towel and quit. What will it take to stop you tonight? What would it take to get you to throw the towel in and to quit and to quit serving the Lord? My prayer and hope is that nothing. My hope and prayer is that all of us will continue on to live for the Lord and serve the Lord and to put Him first. And then one day when we die and go home to heaven, we can hear those words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Just a few thoughts to think about tonight, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Robert, for how true that is. I know Brother Robert didn't mention this, but in a roundabout way he did. But in that verse number 10 there, 2 Timothy chapter 4, where it says, For Didymus hath forsaken me, I could see a, a brokenhearted servant. But those that once stood with him and those that once served with him, those that once worked with him, his heart was broken. Because they chose the wrong course in their life. Can I say that's one of the hardest things a pastor will face? Is those that once stood strong and those that once were faithful. Those that once did their part, did their job in the church and did it right and done it faithfully. To see them walk off and leave it. The sad part, seemingly a lot of times with no regrets. I don't know about you, but. The greatest work and the greatest anything you, can, anything you can be involved in in this life is in the Lord's work. I've been doing it for a long time. This coming um, November the 27th, I'll be saved 49 years. <laughs> I say, whoopee. <laughs> Thank God. It had always been easy. It hadn't always been ice cream and peaches and cream and all that kind of stuff. There's been some potholes and rough places. But I've never been to a point in my life that Jesus hadn't always been there for me. And he'll be there for you. He'll be there for us. Thank you so much, Brother Robert. Let's stand if you would, please. Brother Robert said there may be some here tonight that have contemplated on the fact of throwing the towel in. I remember some years back, I don't know exactly how many, but we had the Phillips family from over in Gaffney, they came and sang for us. It was on a Saturday evening. They sang for us the same day that we had the Reggie, Reggie Sattler family. They sang first. And there's a song that I remember that they sang. I don't really remember how it goes, but I remember the title, so to speak. And the title of it was this, Pick Up the Towel. There may be some tonight that's already thrown it in. I'm glad God allows us to come and take it back up again. He's a God of first, second, third, and a whole lot of chances in our life, and we know that. Sister Patty, you play if you would, please. God spoke to your heart. You need to come tonight. Just slip out and come. Say, Lord, I want to renew my vow, renew my commitment, renew my life unto you that I'll serve you all the days of my life, and I'll serve you faithfully. Everybody needs to come, you come. Slip out and come. But what a good God we serve tonight. That he would even afford us the opportunity to be a part of his work and to serve him. If Brother Robert encouraged you, let me encourage you. Never, never, never give up. Never, never, never lay down what you're doing for Christ. The purpose to do that which is honorable pleasing unto the Lord. Folk are coming. Anyone else needs to come, you come. I can rest assured the devil's going to put those thoughts in your mind of quitting and throwing the towel in and giving up. Well, he'll certainly do that. Pray for those at the altar tonight. 
God will give them the help that they need. I believe with all my heart, as long as we stay in love with Jesus, we'll do what we're supposed to do. I think the problem that we have today, a lot of folk have fallen out of love with Christ. Allow the Lord to rule and reign in your life. Bring him honor and praise and glory. heart to serve the Lord. Well, I appreciate you being here tonight. appreciate you coming, and I encourage you to pray for each other, pray for our church, pray for those that are traveling, those that are on vacation, pray for our sick folk. And I would like to mention, I've meant to do this before the service started, and I failed to do so, but pray for Brother Jeremy Chisholm. Brother Jeremy's had some health issues this week and spent some days in the hospital and didn't realize it to just uh, before I got, that, that time I got to church, I saw it where one of his members had put it on Facebook, and I contacted him by the way of a message and asked him what was going on. He said, Brother Jeremy had some swelling in his feet and his ankles and his hands and, and was very nauseated, and they checked him for several different things, heart meningitis, Lyme disease, and several other things, but I found out that he was, uh, they was getting ready to send him home uh, a moment ago, so we continue to pray for Brother Jeremy. Brother Jeremy's a, a good brother and a good preacher and a good pastor and I love him and I appreciate him he's preached for us several times so keep brother Jeremy in your prayers if you would please and also pray for the family of sister Linda and brother Dennis's granddaughter granddaughters that their dad passed away pray for them girls and pray for the family members once again I remind you they're receiving friends tomorrow night at Unity Baptist Church from 6 to 8 o'clock that's on road 50 um they call it Roebuck, but it's actually the Woodruff exit. If you go down 26 and take Road 50, just get off the exit ramp and turn like to the right. The church is right there on the right. You can't miss it. And the funeral service will be at 11 o'clock at Unity Baptist Church on Tuesday morning. So pray if you would, please, for, those, for that family. And also pray for Joe Lauder's family. His daughter was killed uh, last night, I think it was, in an accident on a railroad track. So pray for them. Another person was also in the hospital and uh, in, a, in the induced coma, so they're not doing well. Pray for that person that's in the hospital from that same accident. All right, folks, let's uh, leave tonight loving the Lord, loving each other, and praising the God, Lord for his good graces and his good goodnesses. He's been good to us. Yeah, yeah Brother Ron Cabinus is having some problems. He has infection in his foot, so pray for him and his job that he has requires him to be on his feet a lot. He's a 
security guard up at North Grove Medical Center. So pray for him and also pray for Joyce Cantrell. She's sick today. Good to see Brother Steve tonight. He was sick this morning, unable to come. Glad he felt like coming tonight. But pray for all these folks. They need our prayers. Let's be dismissed. You be careful going home. Hope all of you have a happy 4th of July. Hope you have all the barbecue you can eat, hot dogs, whatever they might be, barbecue ribs. Shoot all your fireworks up. If you got a lot of them you want to shoot up, call me. I might come and watch you spend your money. Amen. But anyway, let's have a good time. Thank God for our independence and pray for America. And remember, pray for our country. We certainly need it. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And as you go, be careful. And we'll see you on Wednesday nights, 7 o'clock. Amen. All right. Brother Roy, if you would, you dismiss Roy Kinsley.